Welcome to all our spectators and riders, judges, for this big class today, the Grand Prix Special CDI Three Star. I'd like to introduce our ground jury for this class. Sitting at E, Helen Hughes Keane from New Zealand. At H, Jobina Kennedy from Australia. At C, Maria Schwenison from Australia. At M, Maria Colliander from Finland. And at B, Shell Muir from Norway. We wish them all a happy morning's judging. Our first competitor is due in in just a couple of minutes at 11 a.m. So make yourselves comfortable. The arena has been tidied up beautifully by our army of workers. The place looks terrific, as it always does. And we uh, like to thank our sponsors, Foresight, both for the whole event, but also for this class. Foresight is for joints, joints of horses, dogs, cats, and now people, where the new product is called EpiJoint, and it will be out for all of us creaky old people. It'll be out in the chemist warehouse on March the 1st. And I'd also like to pay tribute to the event organisers, Kathy and Trevor Jury Klein, without whom this event would most assuredly not run the way it does. Our first competitor is Brianna Tulitsky. I think she's making her way down. Uh, yes, you have the opportunity to help judging, as in do spectator judging, if you download the app. You can uh, put your own marks in and see how, how good you are at judging in comparison to our international panel we have here today. It's quite a lot of fun. It doesn't matter if you get it wrong. And here's our first competitor in the Grand Prix special CDI Three Star, sponsored by Foresight. Brianna Tulitsky, riding BZ Rafael. Rafael is a 14-year-old black warm blooded gelding by Regard et Moi, out of Gillian R, bred by BZ Warmbloods, owned and ridden by Brianna, who is from Brankston, New South Wales. For those of you at home, tuning in to Dressage by the Sea, you are watching the Grand Prix special, CDI Three Star. And so this is the most technical 
of all the tests that we see here, of all the tests overall really, the Grand Prix Special has a lot of difficult movements. It also has a very high emphasis on the PF and the Passage. So what are we going to see today, Jill? Yes, well, as you've said, it's the hardest. It's also a really lovely test to ride, uh, despite being the hardest. It, it's always had a really good flow about it. Um, but in principle, this is a test made for horses that can passage uh, and do extended trot well and the transitions between. Um, we'll come around, she'll come around the corner here and be doing half pass across the arena from P all the way across to S. And then watch for the transition up here at C. That's the first transition into passage. So a little bit loss of balance in her uh, half pass to the left. So here at C we'll see passage. And so a little bit early. And it goes around to R. And then at R you go into extended trot down to F. So down the long side. So it's a test that makes use of the long sides. And then at F another transition back to passage. And of course the transitions are judged. The trot is judged, the passage is judged. And then we'd come around the corner, come up to make a transition to trot at K. So again, you're looking to see it trot. And then at V, half pass right all the way across to R. So they're sweeping half passes. And here, again, not enough for me, bend in the body to the right. And then again, come up to C and passage again. So a repetition of the other side, and he's got an attractive passage. He gets his knees up, keeps his hocks under. Extended trot. And the extended trot helps because, of course, it's putting power into the trot, and then at the end you contain the power into passage. So that's why it rides quite well. Passage across the short side, all the way until F, where you go to extended walk across the diagonal to S. So from full power, full lift, down to hopefully a relaxed, stretching, over tracking extended walk. It's a, you know, it's a lot to switch on and off. So for those of you at home, if you don't know what over-tracking is, it's when the horse is covering the ground and the hind legs are stepping over the prints of the front feet. And here they walk into Piaf, the first Piaf. It's the only test where you walk into Piaf. And it does, uh, does it usually mean that the walk before is anticipating it, and so it's quite hard to establish a good collected walk. Now the turn and passage around to the centre line for PRF again. He's done that quite well. Passage all the way at E, they turn left and across the centre line pick up right canter. So it's quite a difficult transition, no wall to help you, but done easily here by... Raphael. There's a little rest period here as you canter around down here, so you get a little chance to regroup. Refresh the canter. Refresh the canter, and then it's half pass all the way across the arena to B and all the way back to H. So big, as I said, big sweeping half passes in this test, which suit those long-legged ground-covering horses. But they're steep. And so you have to get there and you need to get to um, the track so you can be straight to ride the change. Going across the diagonal, they'll do nine two times changes. You can count. I need a break. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two, six, two, seven, two, eight, two, nine, two. Terrific. 
and then on the next diagonal they're going to do 15 ones. And in this test, there's, they ask for more from the, in the one times because you do them again on the centre line later on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Great. And of course, the comment there would be they could have been slightly placed a bit later on the diagonal for a better um, placement. Height for a better higher mark. Yeah. Now, extended canter. So, Brianna's doing this really easily for me. She's telling me what she's going to do. I can see it. And then look now for the turn on the centre line, and almost immediately at D is the first canter pirouette. So, collect, collect, and pirouette. And then changes between the pirouettes. Of which there should be nine one times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then come down all the way down to G, very close to the judges for canter pirouette to the right. She's doing a very good job. Oh, I spoke too soon. And so he lost balance, and you could all see that. Um, he spun too much. Back to trot, and down the long side is extended trot. And that's one of those movements that catches a few riders out because we're so used to going across the diagonal from the Grand Prix test at the end. And you'll often see an error, of course, there. And then we have passage from D to X, and at X, Piaf all the way, and then passage forwards all the way up to G. So they make the horses really work for it in this test because X, again, we like to stop at X, so, and then also the halt right up at G, and you'll see, again, some hesitation will come in the passage as they approach the halt. So a big job to keep your horse going right up to the marker. And, of course, a square halt and immobility part of the requirement of the test. So we hope that that helped, that we won't do that through all of them, but for the first one we like to give you an oversight of what is required in the test and uh, Bree made that quite easy for us. She did yeah, so a super was... job on the changes and, you know, overall a fairly good effort for the first horse out in our Grand Prix special today here at the beautiful Willinga Park. And a score for Brianna Talitsky and BZ Raphael of 64.17% with the number one first place beside her name. Our next competitor is Sue Hearn riding Eminent. Eminent is a 15-year-old chestnut Dutch gelding by Santano out of Verona. It's owned and ridden by Sue, and Sue is from Sutton Forest, New South Wales. Uh, so Sue had two horses originally in the Grand Prix test and uh, she rode Galaxy in the freestyle class yesterday and she's riding an eminent... In the special today. <coughs> bit croaky this morning. After four days of announcing... So all the way up to P for the half pass, across to S. 
Lovely crossing. Good position. Horse is clearly looking and bent left. And then we're looking for that transition at sea into passage. Again, just a little bit early, but nice passage. Yeah, the passage should score well. Extended trot, now you get the nice view of it side on. We're only looking from behind, like the sea judge. Everybody gets that view of the short side and you can see that the hind legs aren't always taking the same length step and so that will reduce the mark for the passage. Remembering we always want regularity. You really, you really don't get much time in this test, do you? You're from immediately from one thing to the other. It, it is very technical. Yep, it's a busy, it's a busy test. Here we go. So here she's got the balance and the re regularity back into the passage down here. Remembering there's a mark for every one, so it'll go up and go down. That's, that's the way of it. You've got a different view of the trot there coming towards you. Here again, passage across the short side. And for me, clearly better than the previous short side. To the extended walk, F to S. And this has a coefficient of two. And I can faithfully report that the judges agreed with my comments about that passage and the next passage, so I feel good. I'm sure Sue does as well. It's going well so far for her. I suspect this is one of this horse's first or second uh, specials that it's done. She might have had a, a small competition somewhere doing. And anyway, that was a little bit naughty. They're kicking out at a leg in the walk, so that doesn't help the walk mark. Nice active um, Piaf. I might say that I had the cameraman in the middle of the horse, so I could see. <laughs> Couldn't see all of it together. So again, that's a coefficient of two, that PF there. Good, and not, again, not quite so regular in behind and a little bit front legs going forward. We also get a separate mark f for the transitions. And so the collected canter right at X, he had his hind legs um, in a bit of a muddle. Uh, one judge certainly saw that clearly and one judge didn't. That stress out. Yeah, it is indeed. It's why we have five. So here we go with the twos. Nine twos achieved. Now we're looking for 15 ones, well placed on the diagonal. Some confusion at the beginning there to get started. 
And my suspicion is there that perhaps the horse started ahead of her. And she said, well, I'm not ready. And then, you know, so that, that uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter. But as to the why... Okay, got a ones that time. A little bit over rotated in the second uh, pirouette right. It is a lovely test to watch though, isn't it? No, it really is, yeah. And I think already these horses are all going better than they were the other day. Even if they make a mistake, they're more fluent in general. And I think it's the opening of that test just kind of gets them in the, uh, you know, it gets them supple because they've been asked to go and come back and go and come back and there's been some relief between, even though it's quick. And well done to Sue in mistaking the ones, you know, will no doubt cost us quite a few marks, but uh, the rest of the work was really quite well done. And a score for Sue Hearn and Eminent of 63.851%, putting her in second position. Our, there'll be a short delay until our next competitor, as there's been a withdrawal. So our next competitor is not due in until 11.28, and that'll be Elliot Patterson and Del Piero ZF.
Our next competitor is mating, making his way down in the fort ready for this Grand Prix special CDI three star sponsored by Foresight. And we welcome Elliot Patterson and Del Piero ZF into the area. Del Piero ZF is a 12 year old chestnut Hanoverian gelding by De Niro out of Canordi Gallantry, bred by Tracy Zabel and owned by Elliot Patterson and Alexis Hellier and ridden, from, ridden by Elliot who is from Mogul in Queensland. Bell has rung. Hope you're judging along at home on the spectators judging app. If you're just tuning in here at Willinga Park, you're watching the Grand Prix special CDI three star. This is our third horse to start. Uh, now Del Piero did do the um, freestyle yesterday and I think ended up in third place. Um, this would have to be probably his first CDI Special. So just a little blip there, a miscommunication with the aide for half past left versus canter left. Again, it's a really attractive horse and in passage it's got a great way of springing, carrying itself. You can see the strength in the hindquarters there. It's actually a really good view just for a minute even for you on that screen. You see the power in the sitting going on in the uh, passage. But in the extended trot I think needs to let it out a little bit more. Impressive across the short side. Lovely front leg, raised and hanging, but a little bit too much swinging just there in the collected trot. Nice flow in the half pass left, that's better. Now he's trotting a bit more positively. Taking now he's a little bit sort of forward. It's, it's still a lovely passage, but he just didn't come back as much as he, as I think Elliot wanted him to in the corner. Elliot and his partner Alexis run a very successful training stables in Queensland, and I can see Alexis on the side of the arena riding every step along with Elliot, which is quite cute to watch. She's hiding behind the wall now. <laughs> she must have heard me. Uh, all right, so walking, this is collected walk. And so you can see it should happen on the centre line, the transition into Piaf. And that's the, 
That's why it's there. It's a hard way to get into Piaf is to maintain, walk all the way up to the movement and then start out on the centre line and the horse anticipates. And that's the point of it. Oh, yes, good job, Alexis, with her Piaf in the corner. I can now see her. And it helped because he did a nice job there in that Piaf. And a really nice transition to canter at X. So a little bit of a break as you canter on the short side, trying to generate some energy. And get ready for half pass right. So he got there, as you saw, quite a long way before B. I think he could have had, had ridden a bit more forward in the actual half pass for a better half pass. And then out of nowhere, he said, I never heard of the next aid for the two times changes. So it's a shame. And again, um, it's where you know uh, that the horse is new at the level and there's just every so often they're just not quite with you enough. And so the beginning he had missed one and then he started and then he did some lovely ones. And in the end, of course, Elliot will just be pleased that he did lovely ones, um, but he'll, you know, rue the day, so to speak, that the mark is affected. Here we go again. And that was well done. So, and that's because he had a good result on the other diagonal of ones. Ultimately, the horse got on the aid, so it's good. So he needs to trot at M and go down the long side. So what you're saying to yourself here, down the long side, down the long side. Yep, okay, don't turn. Now go. That's what I used to say anyway. <laughs> it's amazing how the test hasn't changed for a long time. a little less enthusiasm in that Piaf. But again, a nice ending. And a good job to and Elliot. A good job. Which I presume would probably be his first special. And a great job by Alexis on the side, Piafing all the way through the test as well. So it's interesting that uh, looking at the results on the screen, it's been a little... The mistake we saw in the one times changes might not have been seen by all the judges. Mm -hmm. Well, interesting. Interesting.
Elliot Patterson and Del Piero ZF have scored 65.404 per cent, putting them into first position currently. Our next competitor making her way down the gangway or the laneway will be Caroline Wagner and Ibicus. Ibicus is a 11-year-old chestnut Dutch gelding by Apache out of Sephiria. Owned by Carolyn Wagner and Pauline Carnival. Bred by B. Kalshoven. Ridden by Caro Wagner, who comes from Somerville in Victoria. So for those of you at home, a little, little bit of interesting information, Caroline and Peter Wagner run a very successful uh, saddlery business. They make beautiful bridles and clothing. And Ibicus is another one of these horses that is not very experienced uh, in the big environment. Um, and quite likely this is his first special. Certainly first special at CDI level. Mm, being by Apache is a very elegant, uphill, light-footed type of horse. Super type. A little bit swaying in his half pass. But I do think that every horse that we've seen so far this morning is looking more confident in the arena today than what we've seen over the last couple of days. Icab is definitely looking much more confident today. So the steepness of these half passes makes, uh, that's where you get a little bit of this uh, loss of balance and the balance comes from the engagement of the, especially inside hind leg, but never forget the outside hind leg either. So the hind legs, full stop. And in its passage work, I'd like its hind legs to be more active and more underneath. got a lovely front leg and that's getting better that passage for its regularity but again more from the hind legs and what Jill's talking about she's talking about you know getting up a, a really high score she wants more for a really high score so if we're talking if we want to give eights and nines and tens that's right that's what would need to happen She's ticking along 
happily at about 65 per cent. Here you see the horse can have an active hind leg and sit. So ideally taking some of that shortening that it has in the piaf into the passage and that will be the process forward in the training with this horse. See it has a good ability to sit but making that, carrying that forward he says, oh, I just would really rather, if I didn't have to... Work that hard. Work that hard, so... In Grand Prix, once you've got to the level, they still take another two or three years at least of continuing the training to get stronger stronger and, and more confident in what they do and therefore more able to produce it kind of on demand in the test. But as a judge, you just judge what you see on the day can't make an allowance and say, well, I know this is its first test, so I'll, I'll be friendly. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good. And achieved. And 15, so terrific. Getting some enthusiasm, making him sit a ahead of her in the canter, which is good. Gallop across here, go on, give it a go. Good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a shame. Anyway, again, you know, you just don't dwell on that. Keep going. I think Caro has definitely um, ridden, more positive. ridden more positively today and, of course, that might have caused that mistake, but not to be, you know, she doesn't need the horse to learn to be um, a bit lazy in the test. She needs him to say, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm here with you. And she'd have to be pleased with today's performance. I think I would think she would be very pleased because it's been an improvement from the other day and he's hearing her. He's, he is. He might have made some mistakes, but he's definitely hearing what she's saying. So good job for Carolyn Wagner and Ichabus.
And a score for Caroline Wagner and Ibicus of 64.596, which puts her in second position currently. And our next competitor is circling and ready to go, and that is Marvin Smink and Histoire de Texel. Histoire de Texel is a 12-year-old Dutch warm blood mare. She's by Jazz out of Corofina. She's owned by Sharon Roberts and ridden by Marvin Smink, who comes from Merrick's North in Victoria. horse is by one of my favourite uh, stallions, Jazz, and I was given some information the other day when I was talking about him. And he passed away in June 2020, and he was 29 years old. So he has really left a legacy in the sport, Jazz, and this mare is by Jazz. Elegant in its half pass. Lovely crossing. Okay, transition to passage. It has an expressive, probably jazz-like uh, front leg. And you remember that the previous horse was by Apache, and Apache has jazz has jazz in him as well. Oh, that was a shame. So just oh. some confusion for those of you at home, you know, new to dressage, that the aid is similar. You know, the outside leg is back and the inside leg is on the girth and sometimes there can be that moment of confusion where the horse says, oh, I think that's canter. Hopefully at this level they're starting to become more established but, you know, a little bit of tension creeps in from the atmosphere and the horse is wanting to do well. Questions sometimes get a little bit blurred, or the answers get blurred. It's a very attractive outline on that short side. Yeah, nicely diagonal, engaged. Uphill. And uphill. So it should be scoring. Quite well in that passage. And they were quite harsh, I think, on the half pass right. Got a four across the board, so there's a costly, just a little bit of cantering, and poof, down it goes. You really can't afford to make one mistake if you're going to set out to be the winner. Oh. And here Histoire has oh dear, missed the uh, indication that it should be piaffing and then when given a little bit of a reminder, a little bit ugly. Okay, but he's off and doing the passage, but of course that won't be helpful to his score. And now it's, see, it can say, yes, okay, I know what piaf is. But it's a bit tense now, so we're getting some uneven steps behind.
And that's unfortunate. Horse obviously feeling a little bit of a little bit overwhelmed. But it does happen. Onwards to the next thing. Exactly. Marvin looks like a fairly cool char character and he's just got on with the job. Good, good reaching and ground cover, but then I think just a mistake then in the change at H. I'd like a little bit more separation in the hind legs. They're sort of jumping a little bit side to side. But that can be caused from the tension. But Marvin is doing a great job trying to keep the mare on his aids. Those ones were actually a little better than the 15 ones. Oh, no. We might have to stop saying that before the pirouette. <laughs> Just when you think <sighs> you can yes. have a breath. Boom. same view as us coming towards you or towards us towards you down the center line and this Grand Prix special CDI three star sponsored by Foresight to the conclusion of their test. And that mistake after the nine ones before the counter pirouette, the judge is not so sure where to put that problem. So we're seeing some... Whether it was on the beginning of the pirouette or whether it was on the... End of the, of the ones. On the end of the line. So yeah. there's a, a bit of a discrepancy there. Look, in the end, in lots of ways, it doesn't matter. The score is uh, affected by the mistake and it's not going to um, change his overall, his overall position very much. So, But it's always interesting to watch. And, of course, if you're not, the per if you're not sitting here at the on the day or on watching on the screen and you went and looked at these scores afterwards, you'd go, oh, my goodness, how could they have a difference of that and uh, on that mark but it was difficult to decide where you would put that. Is it the first um, step of the pirouette or is it the last step of the line? Yeah and of course the pirouette is supposed to happen at G um, and therefore I think I would have tried to put it into the one times changes mark rather than into the pirouette mark, but they, as I say, they've had a varying opinion on that.
Our next competitor for today's class, the Grand Prix CDI Three Star Grand Prix Special, is Mary Hanna riding Ivanhoe. Ivanhoe, an 11 year old black Dutch gelding by Desperado out of Pirouette, bred by Suzanne Watershoot and owned by Mary, Hammer, Mary and Rob Hanna. And Mary comes from Gisborne, Victoria. Just another bit of information for the breeding buffs out there. This, uh, the dam of this horse is also by Jazz. So I think Mary has ridden a few Jazzes over the years. Lovely, fluent, ground covering half pass. He really does have a sensational way of going. It's, he's very impressive in the ring. Ivanhoe. A little abrupt at sea is what we would write if we were writing that down, that transition. But well recovered on we, with the lovely passage. So passage is certainly something this horse does very well. You can see there, knees are up, leg is hanging, hind legs are under, diagonal is clear. The transition was obvious into collected trot. And here he does look like he springs across. She'll be a little bit more, I think, a bit smoother here in this transition. Yeah. And again, this horse, of course, hasn't done, again, I doubt it's even done a, into two, uh, a special. Mary, of course, we've done many. But it's not a test that gets practised at smaller competitions, not very often. Occasionally, um, organisers put it on. Of course, Mary's. No doubt practised it at home, I'm sure. But it's not the same as coming and doing it in public. He's just got such a good posture and way of going about him. Yeah. Very impressive. I think eight is not a Out silly... It's not a silly mark, and there are several... Probably not as many as I think there should be for that passage. Nevertheless, you can see she's ticking along at 73%, so that's good. You know, we're happy with that score. A little bit early and a little bit 
travelling into that Piaf with Passage before it was Piaf. hollow in that piaf and so the front legs just looking like they're kind of getting away from the horse a little bit. Yes, I was about to say that's not right. Oh dear. Oopsie. Now that she did not need to do. Remember, it's 2% off the end mark. Expensive. Very expensive. And so the nines, the nine two is okay, but not really maintaining the straight diagonal line. So you can give them a seven, but you can't really go higher than that because it's supposed to be on the diagonal line and straight. Here she's doing a much better job in the ones. She'll be pleased because that's what uh, was where there was a problem on Friday. It's the lack of ones. So, as we said, he is just new, really, at this level, and, as I said, probably his first special, certainly under these conditions. So it will be a... Uh, I'm sure she's probably still in front, but it's, it'll give her... Well, she'll be going home and she'll have things she knows she has to work on. Lovely passage to finish and a good square halt.
Our next competitor in the Grand Prix Special CDI Three Star Class, sponsored by Foresight, is Charlotte Phillips, riding CP Dresden. Dresden's a 17-year-old warm blood gelding by Damsey out of Cam Callum Park Regardless. Read by Susan Ellicassi, owned by Jane Bruce and ridden by Charlotte Phillips from Berry. I can just tell those at home that Mary's score came through at 68.87, which put her in front. And now Charlotte made a lovely transition to Passage there at sea. This is a horse that has done this a few times. So he doesn't count as a newbie to this level. I'm going to quite good activity and lift in his passage across the short side. Well, she's just let the quarters trail a little bit in that half pass. Expressive ground covering extended trot. More quite confidently performed. And this uh, movement, collected walk into Piaf, which is actually one of his signature movements in his freestyle, so he should do it well and maybe just a little bit of a sort of jump into it. A little stutter. A little stutter and a little bit low in the pole. But much more, as you saw, much more on, this, uh, on the marker than everybody else. This one not on the marker. Doesn't gets they get uh, forgiveness? I think is what we'd say for the PRF on the centre line. It's a lot of horses that do it ahead of time or ahead of the marker. So it's one of those spots where perhaps accuracy is forgiven. Even the very best do <laughs> don't always do it on the centre line. Good 
be a little bit more fluent in that half pass to the right. Easy twos. Fifteen ones. Also very smooth. Very small pirouette. Which is what you want. Yes, that is good. <laughs> and if you can achieve a small pirouette and keep the canter going. And keep the posture. And keep the posture, then that's a big mark. And he got some eight and 7.5s for both pirouettes. They're doing a good job. Might be able to get up into Second place currently. So well done to Charlotte Phillips and CP Dresden completing their Grand Prix special CDI three star here at Dressage by the Sea. This class is sponsored by Foresight. The crowd is really enjoying her performance. And we're just waiting on a score to come to hand. Dresden had a big weekend, has had a big weekend. He's competed in four tests. They came second yesterday in the freestyle. Uh, and was third in the Grand Prix on Friday. And I think maybe he was second in the end too. I can't remember. You have quite, a very good remember, memory. We have seen a lot of horses. <laughs> 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 well, it just helped that yesterday I had to do that prize giving. And so I remember. Remember. But yes, you're right. It's likely to be. And a score for Charlotte Phillips and CP Dresden of 66.553%, putting her into second position. With just two competitors left to come in this class. Our next competitor is circling the arena. We have Jessica Dertel on Senan. Senan is a uh, KWPN stallion by Vivaldi out of Vitana v, 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 how, we, how do we say that one? Vitana V. Vitana V. I haven't been to Holland for a few years, so my Dutch is failing me.
So you're currently watching the winner from yesterday's freestyle, Jessica Dertel and Senan, and they were also the winner of the Grand Prix. So we expect we're going to see a fantastic performance here. And she's started with a very powerful trot. So terrific front leg, uh, which is always, uh, you know, makes ex the trot look expressive. But of course, we're always looking at the hind leg as well. And in that extended trot, Senum was, was good. Left half pass. Always I'm wanting a little bit more bending, but it was quite rhythmical. So when we talk about the hind end, it's that, that's where the motor is of the horse or the power comes from. You're getting a good view of that on side on. Yeah, you really, you really are. Um, and Senan, I think Jess is, um, she's, uh, you know, she's young and therefore brave, so she's not holding back here. Okay, not as uh, fluent as the other side in the half pass. Got a eights for some of the extended trot work. So yes, the back legs could be a little bit more energetic in that last passage. Extended walk. He's happy to have a stretch and a Cover the ground, relax. Senan, of course, has been, he is a seasoned campaigner at this level in various parts of the world. And still a very generous horse on the job, nice piaf. A little bit gappy in the mouth. Could sit a little bit more. So he's got some bending, but we could see a little bit more lowering. It's going to be a close competition. Well, it really would have been had Mary not made a couple of big boo-boos. Principally, the error, of course, is what's going to change the result here because that 2% she cannot claw back. Look at what she's been and gone. But when we look at the result that we're currently sitting on 70 and Mary got 68 point something... Close. There's the two percent. So as long as uh, 
uh, Jess and the next competitor perform the test, relatively speaking, mistake free. Yep, nice pat for him there. So she's she is producing a very nice test. But anyone can make an error, of course, just because they have a momentary lap. So, um, like Mary did, it's, it's what happens. A little bit generous in the size of that pirouette to the left. And again, interestingly, I was the one who thought they were generous, the horse was a little bit big in the pirouette, but the judges didn't, so I'm now not making any more comments. Let me get that lovely side on <laughs> view again. So moved up to 71.6, which is Nearly 72. Nearly 72, and she might get there. Mm, lovely square hole. Oh. Yeah. Go Jess. Go yeah. Jess, yeah. Well done, no mistakes. And got the judges on side with a very nice performance. Makes the selection for Paris very interesting. Could be our team horse. Yeah, well, she's um, well placed. She's got a couple of MERs. Um, so she is qualified to go and in the next few months up until June we will, find out. we will be seeing lots of them trying for results that uh, give the selectors something to think about. Okay. Oh. For Jess Dirtel at E, 71.383, at H, 72.447, at C, 72.340, at M, 72.447, and at B, 71.596 giving a very lovely score of 72.043 and first place, with Mary Hannah currently in second place on, with Ivanhoe on 68.872, and Charlotte Phillips and Dresden in third place on 66.55. As our final competitor circles the arena, and it's Heath Ryan riding Bronze Boy R. Bronze Boy R is a 12-year-old buckskin warm blood gelding by Byerly Briere out of Red Legs. And Heath comes from Heatherbray, New South Wales.
Well, can Heath top that score of 72% for Jess, being the seasoned competitor he is? I'm sure he'll give it a go. Give it a go. Quite rhythmical and bent half pass and easy crossing. A little early into the transition uh, for passage at sea. Powerful in the extended trot. And here also active regular passage. That was a more prompt transition into passage. So scoring quite well, up to 67%. Information about Bronze Boy, he's also a three-day event horse, so a very clever horse, being able to be at the top of his in two disciplines. Yes, and he is only 12, so um, he can obviously keep going in um, either or both. It's obviously dependent on what Heath's feeling is his strong suit. I'm sure Heath has actually enjoyed riding him, you know, at this level because the horse has given him some nice rides. Nice rides. Oh. <laughs> Dear. That's unfortunate. Something happened then. I have no idea what. Oh, actually, I think he was going past E. As in he had forgotten to turn left today, but I'm uh, not so sure. Anyway, maybe it won't be an error, not sure. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he was gonna canter at E. I didn't see canter, but anyway. They have put an error on the screen. <laughs> they have, but we'll see. Because, of course, that's where you canter uh, in the straight Grand Prix test is at E and keep going down the long side but instead Heath of turning. on his way back on track. Yes, it won't deter him. Deter him. Carry on. Shorten the reins and on we go.
wonder if he's ever done the statistics of how many horses he's produced to Grand Prix. There'd be quite a few. Oh, I think knowing Heath, I think he could recite it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> he's always good at statistics. Very, very good ambassadors for the sport, breeding and training horses and riders. Yes, the Heath and Rosie, and in fact, the entire Ryan family have been good horsey bods, let's say, for Australia. Just an over-rotation there in that pirouette. Oh no, mm. of course did what I said. Didn't so go down the long side. And so it. that's going to be elimination for Heath. Now he's just going to keep going, I think. Because of the other error, and you don't get a second chance. So he's just going to keep going and I should just as well let him. Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Ah. No, that would have been better just to have let that keep going, yeah, I feel. Because he's out, unfortunately. Yeah, so you only get one error and then on the second one, elimination. And he, of course, was going across the diagonal instead of down the long side. But realistically, if he'd just done the centre line... They could have eliminated him. They could have eliminated him anyway. Who, who cares? Oh, he's going to... No, no, they've changed their mind. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is a little bit funny. Oh. Well, they've opened the gate. They've opened the gate. <laughs> he's going to turn to an open gate. <laughs> anyway, as we said, Heath is not to be... The ultimate showman. Yes, he's going to finish... So a somewhat untidy end for Heath, even though the end was well before with the elimination. But a um, uh, little bit of a chat with the judge at sea. So our winner of this class will be Jess Dertel on the mighty 72%. So it's certainly been her weekend. With a clean sweep and across. I just need to announce to the prize about the prize giving. So just a reminder to our riders in this class that the prize giving for this class and the previous two classes in this arena will be at 1pm at the bunker. And uh, to give, just to give you the final result, a great win and high score of 72.043% to Jess Dertel and Senan. In second place, Mary Hanna riding Ivanhoe on 68.43%. 872. In third place, Charlotte Phillips, CP Dresden on 66.553. In fourth place, Elliot Patterson, Del Piero ZF on 65.404. In fifth place, Caroline Wagner and Ibicus on 64.596. And in sixth place, Brianna Tulitsky on BZ Rafael on 64.170. So 
all the three previous classes, the Grand Prix Special, the Intermediate One Freestyle and the First Class. <laughs> The under 25 freestyle, please. Uh, positions one to six go to the bunker for a 1 p.m. prize giving. And we are back here for the intermediate one freestyle CDN at two o'clock. Plenty of time to go and eat, buy, walk. Look forward to seeing you all then. Shepherd, a proudly powering Willinga Park through holistic electrical solutions. Our experienced team are here to assist with all facets of your electrical needs and can design, build, commission and maintain your electrical assets. From low voltage, high voltage, critical supplies and even off-grid installations we ensure that when you need reliable power you can rely on Shepherds. Let's get connected. The hospital at Willinga Park is a state-of-the-art building, not only when it comes to facilities and the equipment inside, but I think also from an aesthetic point of view. We've been very fortunate that with Terry's backing, we've been able to build this absolutely amazing facility. This hospital is built as a referral hospital. What we're hoping to do is cater for all cases, if it is critical care, out of hours, where we can sort of provide the best possible care and service for those horses. Obviously, Willinga Park offers some amazing facilities for the different horse disciplines. And I think through the years, we realized that to complete the circle, we needed a hospital facility as well, so we could cater and make sure that we had all bases covered. I think we're in a part of the world where there is a need for a referral hospital. Often when horses have problems, time is of the essence. So we're feeling a real niche here by providing that service. We have got a number of clients coming as far as the north of Rockhampton or from the south of Victoria. So it's a very varied group of clients that will be able to offer that service. One of the things that we're very excited about is the arrival of our MRI machine. It's not a standing MRI machine, which a number of places in Australia already have. But this is a G-Scan, which is a very large and advanced MRI system, which will allow us to do some very extensive imaging, not only from the foot and the lower limbs, but also including the stifle in the hind limbs, including the elbow in the forelimb and it will also allow us to take imaging of the head and the neck. 
Another thing we're super excited about is our IVF lab. In the last few years, we've spent a lot of time perfecting our ability to be able to produce embryos in the lab. We're now at a stage where we can do this commercially with a lot of confidence. We can not only harvest the eggs, but we've got the lab at Wallinga where we can then mature the eggs to a stage where we can inject them with a single stallion sperm and then put them in the incubators and grow them out to viable embryos. We can do a direct transfer or we can also freeze them and we've spent a lot of time perfecting all those different steps. It's a very complex thing to iron out but feel very confident now that we can offer this to any horse breeder in Australia. Now the hospital is sort of nearing completion. I think we feel we're in a very good position to provide equine excellence to all horse breeders and all horses.